Fox News propagandist Sean Hannity decided to weigh in on the Georgia runoffs taking place. And he, of course, went in on the two Democrats who are running, Raphael Warnock and John Ossoff. And these individuals, they're not progressives. They're pretty standard centrist Democrats. Both of them are capitalists. Both of them largely are neoliberals, especially John Ossoff. And there's nothing uniquely scary or socialist or radical about them. Having said that, though, that's not what Sean Hannity wants Fox News viewers to believe. And if you watch this segment, it's almost seemingly satirical. Like, if you told me that this was satire and you, like, swapped Sean Hannity with someone else, I would believe you. Because there's a really um, <laughs> strong common theme and um, you're going to see it immediately. Every other word that he uses is radical to describe milquetoast centrist Democrats. Take a look. Two weeks away now, Georgia Senate runoffs that will determine control of the U.S. Senate and the new extreme Democrats are making it clear that if they win those races, they are ready, willing, and they are able. They will unleash what would be the most destructive, radical, left-wing political forces on you, the American people. All eyes on the great state of Georgia again tonight. These races are critical, critical to protect the country from a radicalism that would be unmatched in history, critical to preserve the president's uh, work and legacy over the last four years, critical to continuing real investigations into real abuse of power, corruption, and that means zero experience Hunter and Joe and everything else. Georgia, if you care about radicals packing the the Supreme Court, if you don't want open borders and amnesty, if you want energy independence, if you want lower taxes and less regulation, we're going to need you to engage in a major way and put aside whatever dif differences you may have with local, weak, rhino Republicans in your state. They're irrelevant at this point. Radicalism awaits this country in ways you cannot imagine, and only you, the great state of Georgia, can stop it. Now, yesterday, Joe Biden went to Atlanta to try and drum up support, as we showed you last night, for socialist John Ossoff and Raphael Warnock, but barely anyone showed up beyond a few parked cars and the media mob. Yet we are supposed to believe that Biden is the single most popular Democrat of all time, more popular than, well, and more votes than Obama, more, 15 million more, 15 million more than Hillary. I had no idea Joe was so popular. Frankly, I don't really believe he is. So to the people of Georgia, I do understand and can totally relate to your disgust with your governor and your secretary of state for their refusal to take the needed action to restore election integrity and fix what are obvious flaws with the voting process. But that doesn't mean Republicans, conservatives, uh, freedom lovers, and patriots can stay home. Because this is a tight race, and conservatives and Republicans in Georgia need to show up, preserve the president's progress, stop the far left power grab. Right now, you are the single most important state by far in the union. Now, look, a new poll from the Trafalgar Group shows a slight lead, pretty much a dead even race, with John Ossoff and David Perdue, a narrow lead for Kelly. Leffler, inside advantage, has Purdue and Leffler with a one-point lead each. It is that close. He's not even trying. Like, he's not even trying to be a persuasive propagandist. These radical Democrats, radical John Ossoff and radical Raphael Warnock are going to enact the most radical agenda that America has ever seen. Like, it, you're not even trying. Like, if you're going to do propaganda, at least put in a little effort, just a little bit more. He says, quote, they would unleash the most destructive, radical left-wing political forces on the American people. Okay, well, let's assume that what he's saying here, like the worst case scenario that he is trying to get you to envision comes to fruition. And we don't have the Democrats in control of the Senate. We actually have all squad type members in control of the Senate. What exactly could we uh, look forward to in this hypothetical situation? Medicare for all? Guaranteed healthcare, education, is that really something that's bad? If you ask people if they should be guaranteed healthcare, nine times out of ten, if you don't word that question in a biased way, they're going to say yes, because we're all human beings. Of course, we want what's best for ourselves. We want to be able to thrive in this country. So to do that, we need things. We need healthcare. We need education. We need a job with a livable wage. So is that really that radical? It's not. But really, 
to him and the reason why we see so much pushback and fear-mongering about radicalism and socialism is because if you actually give people these types of policies that the radical left is pushing for, like Medicare for all, free education, they would love it. And if you try to take it away from them, they would hate it. So it's easier to stop these policies from um, getting enacted in the first place because once they actually get enacted, then it's going to be a lot more difficult to take it away from them once people have it and they see that it's not so scary. I mean, look at Social Security. This was something that, of course, a lot of right-wingers fear-mongered about, but now that we have it, whenever there's talks of even cutting it slightly, people freak out because it's very popular. He also says, uh, these races are critical, critical to protect the country from a radicalism that would be unmatched in history. Really? A radicalism that would be unmatched in history. Let me remind you, we're talking about John Ossoff and Raphael Warnack. <laughs> <laughs> Do you support the Green New Deal? No. Do you support Medicare for all? No. Radical. He also called them both socialists. <laughs> To call John Ossoff a socialist, it's so delusional that if you're a political pundit to say this, I mean, you should you should quit because it proves that you are not qualified for your job. If you think that a centrist Democrat, center-right Democrat, in fact, like John Ossoff, is a socialist, then you don't know basic political terms. You should not be doing political commentary, Sean. But really, this, this is all a ploy. Like, he knows that these aren't socialists. Even as dumb as Sean Hannity is, he knows what he's doing is trying to do damage control. Stop the damage that Trump caused. Because listen, Trump has convinced all of his followers that their votes did not count. So after selling them this lie that in Georgia the election was stolen from them, what incentive do they have to go out and vote for these Republicans if they don't think their votes are going to matter? And the way that Sean Hannity says this, like goes about convincing them, it's extremely patronizing. And if I were a Republican watching this and I were smart enough to realize what he was doing, I would think that he was trying to insult my intelligence because this is what he says. Uh, we're going to need you to engage in a major way and put aside whatever differences you have uh, or may have with local weak rhino Republicans in your state. He later added, I do understand and can totally relate to your disgust with your governor and secretary of state for their refusal to take needed action to restore election integrity. Again, I don't think he understands how contradictory this is. Not only is it patronizing, but he's saying... Listen, I know that you're so mad that Brian Kemp and Brad Raffensperger, the Secretary of State of Georgia, didn't steal this election for Donald Trump. But if you already believe that the election was stolen and Brian Kemp and Brad Raffensperger were complicit, why would you believe that this election in Georgia would be any different? Like, do you not understand? If somebody really did drink the Kool-Aid, then you're not going to convince them. But if someone didn't drink the Kool-Aid and they actually support Donald Trump and Sean Hannity, but realize that, you know, the election was legitimately lost, then they're going to think that this is condescending and think that you're being patronizing and, you know, you're uh, trying to pander to them and insulting their intelligence. Like, I don't know how this is supposed to work and galvanize the right to come out and support these two Republicans. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, they're going to lose. I don't know. It's a close race. But if you're trying to undo the damage that Trump caused, first of all, you need a better argument than socialism bad, these are radicals, because these are not radicals. And if you actually genuinely believe that they're radicals, you're truly showing your own colors. To think that John Ossoff is a radical, you'd have to be so far to the right that a centrist would seem radical to you. That speaks to your own radicalism, but radicalism in a bad way, being far right. But I mean, to get the people who believe this election was stolen and that the Georgia Republican governor was complicit to come out and support them. I mean, again, I, I just don't know how this would be persuasive. I don't know how this would be persuasive because if I genuinely think somebody took this election, uh, I'm not going to think, oh, well, this time it's going to be different. I'm going to be pissed. And even if I think it could be different, I'm going to want to teach the Republicans in this party a lesson in the state a lesson what sean hannity doesn't realize is that if people truly don't believe in the process then they're not going to participate this is the damage that trump caused and i know that sean hannity is doing what the republican party wants and advertisers on fox news who are also donors to the republican party wants but i mean it, it's kind of too late like once you delegitimize an election 
and there's a runoff taking place and you want people to participate in said election, it's really difficult to put the cat back in the back. It's going to take years to rebuild that trust. Uh, so this was interesting, but most like entertaining to me is just how he really wants you to think that centrist Democrats are radicals. Like, what a clown. Beta male, not a beta male.